All right, uh, this will be the video on electric potential energy. Uh, so just a word of warning, um, we're working towards getting to something called electric potential, which will be the next two videos. So there will be electric potential part one and electric potential part two. This video is going to be electric potential energy. So we're going to use the letter U for this one. This will be this video. Uh, and we're going to use the letter V for this other thing. And th this other thing, electric potential, has different dimensions, different units. So really, don't, don't confuse these two terms. They sound really similar. Electric potential energy versus electric potential. And a lot of times, we leave out the word electric just because everything in this class is E&M. So potential energy versus potential. Two different things. Today, this video, we're doing potential energy. So everything is energy. We're not dealing with anything V related. OK, so um, the first section is just reminding you some things of what uh, hopefully you remember from uh, your mechanics class. Uh, <clears throat> so the issues are uh, mechanical energy and work. Uh, so, you know, in mechanics, you did some problems involving conservation of energy, and that's still true uh, in this course. Energy is still going to be conserved. You know, we're, we're especially in this course, we're not going to be dealing with any sort of friction. Um, so mechanical energy will be conserved for every problem unless told otherwise, um, basically every problem in this class. So in particular, you have uh, the mechanical energy is the sum of the kinetic and potential energy. So as one goes up, the other one goes down. You know, imagine this bar chart where as one goes up, the other goes down. And in particular, the way this kind of operates in nature is that whenever you have a particle it, and released from rest, it will naturally want to decrease its potential energy and increase its kinetic energy. So this happens just automatically. You drop a rock, it naturally wants to decrease its potential energy and convert it into kinetic energy. So that's still going to be true for these charges. Wherever you put the charge, you know, it goes, so a positive charge will go in the direction of the electric field. It's decreasing its potential energy and increasing its kinetic energy. And so we're going to make that quantitative in this uh, in this video, in these sections. We want to describe formulas to how much energy this charged particle is going to pick up. So that's a piece of this. Um, another piece is uh, to relate. So we've talked about electric forces. To talk about uh, energies involved, to make this quantitative, we need to remember work. Uh, so the work done on a particle is the integral of the force over the distance. So this is a dot product between these two things. So if, if, a for, if a particle is moving, uh, say, to the right, and the force on the particle is to the right, then that force is doing positive work on the particle. Right? That dot product is positive. If the force is opposite the direction that the, the, the particle is moving, then this work is negative. So this dot product is taking care of all the cases in between. So like if the force is perpendicular to the direction that the particle is moving, the work is zero. Um, the work done by uh, a field so we, in mechanics, you did the, the gravitational field. Here it'll be like the electric field. The work done by the electric field uh, would be the integral of the electric force, dot ds. Uh, and something, and one last reminder from, uh, from your mechanics course is that if you have a conservative force, if, if you have something that has a potential energy function, like gravity, gravity has a potential energy function. You can relate the work done by that force to the change in potential energy. So the work done by the force is minus the change in potential energy. Uh, so the work done by the electric field, uh, we can automatically relate that to a potential energy function is the minus the change in potential energy. So like I was saying before, a, a, a charged particle, if you just let it go from rest, it's going to want to decrease its potential energy. So delta U wants to be negative. And then with this extra minus sign, that means the work done by the field would be positive, which makes sense, right? Because if you release it from rest, the work done on it can't be negative because the kinetic energy can't go down from zero. It can only go up. So the potential energy can only go down. Um, so these are just some of the reminders in that, in that first section. And again, you know, a lot of, a lot of analogies with gravity. This is going to be slightly more complicated than gravity because gravity, there's only positive mass, and it can only fall in the direction of the gravitational field. Whereas for us, with charges, we have positive and negative charges. So we got to be a little bit careful, more careful with directions. Um, and we'll see that throughout this, the, the next two chapters, actually. So the next part of this uh, discusses the region inside a parallel plate capacitor, an ideal parallel plate capacitor. And the reason we're focusing on this is because the electric field is uniform. So the, the simplest example that we can talk about is one where the electric field is constant everywhere in, in both magnitude and direction. So in other words, a uniform field. 
in a capacitor, the electric field is uniform and it points from the positive plate to the negative plate. Uh, so the electric field lines look like this, you know, evenly spread out because the, the they should be if I could draw. Uh, all pointing in the same direction. So the electric field looks like this from the positive plate to the negative plate. And your book shows that, you know, using the formula for work and how it relates to change in kinetic energy, you can define the potential energy of a charge in a uniform electric field to be this. So U naught is defined to be the potential energy of the charge particle Q at the negative plate. So if, if you have a charge particle Q, remember that, that the, um, it's kind of like a constant of integration. So uh, work is an integral of the force. You, you, you can get a constant of integration or another way of saying it, this is that you can define the zero of your potential energy to be wherever you want. So this is just like a constant that is taking that into account. Like the, the zero of the potential energy is whatever. So you not could be whatever. Um, but once you define that the, the potential energy there, then what this is saying is that if Q is positive, the potential energy definitely goes up as you go against the electric field. So in this picture where the electric field is pointing to the left, I'm imagining like looking at points going to the right, going away from the negative plate. A positive charge doesn't want to move in that direction, right? A positive charge wants to move to the left. You have to like grab the positive charge. By you, I mean something other than the field. Like the, the, the charge wants to move to the left. You would have to drag it, you know, against its will to the, to the right. Uh, you're increasing the potential energy of the system. You know, just like you, you drag a rock upwards against where it wants to go, you're increasing the potential energy. The potential energy increases to the right for a positive charge. Uh, so that's taken into account in this formula, right? So S equals zero is the where the negative plate is for this formula. And then this is S greater than zero or potential energy uh, greater than U naught if, uh, if Q is positive. So if Q is positive, then the potential energy goes up to the right. But for a negative charge, and notice how this formula depends on what charge you're putting in the field. For a negative charge, you would decrease the potential energy. In other words, you wouldn't have to drag it, right? It would automatically want to go to the right. So negative charge will automatically decrease its potential energy. Potential energy goes down from U naught. Uh, okay. Um, so this is just uh, saying all that in words and the fact that, you know, as the potential goes down, the kinetic energy goes up or vice versa. Um, again, assuming the mechanical energy is conserved. So you're not dragging it and putting energy into the system, then the total energy is conserved. Uh, an example going through with this. So, um, so the example has the area of the plates of the capacitor and the charge. So you can find out the charge density. And then once you have the charge density, you can find out the uh, strength of the electric field. So you can find the electric field uh, and then release uh, a proton and electron from rest from the center. So if you know the electric field and you know the charges you're dealing with, you can figure out energy changes by using this formula, 25.10 right there. Um, so that distance would be, so the, di the distance that e either the proton or the electrons are gonna go is gonna be half the, the, the uh, width of the capacitor. So that S, the change in, in the U. So in other words, this formula is also, if I take like the change of both sides, um, the U naughts are gonna cancel out and this is gonna be Q times E times Delta S. And in that example problem, the delta S has has uh, absolute value d over two, the, the width between the plates divided by two. Q is the uh, charge of either the electron or the proton, and then E is that field that you would have to calculate. So it's going through uh, this, this formula. And then once you get that energy, you can actually find the speed of the particle by, uh, by remembering kinetic energy is one half mv squared. Right? And the, the electron will pick up a much bigger speed than the proton because the electron is lighter. So actually, uh, from this formula, if they both, if both the proton and the electron move the same distance, they experience the same external electric field, and they have the same magnitude of charge, they're going to pick up the same energy. And if that energy is one half mv squared, the one with lower mass has the higher speed. So the electron is going to move a lot faster as a result of this than the, than the proton. So that was the case. That previous section talked about an, a uniform external field, so where E was constant. This next section talks about the field due to a point charge, which you know drops off like one over r squared. So again, it does this. It relates work with electric force, but you're integrating a one over r squared field. And if you integrate, you know, one over x squared, the, the book is using x to not scare you with an r, but <laughs> same thing. So if you integrate a one over x squared dx, you get a one over x, you know, with a minus sign, and you got to be a little careful with the minus sign. 
But the overall result of this is that the electric potential energy between two point charges is KQ1, Q2 over R. So what you can do with this, for example, is suppose you had two plus charges, Q1, which is positive, and Q2, which is positive, and they're separated by some, some distance R, R1, 2, distance between 1 and 2. So imagine you, you start off with both of these two things at rest and you let them go. They're going to fly away from each other. The amount of energy that they're going to pick up, so once they get infinitely far away from each other, they have this energy left over. So whatever potential energy you had, which was positive, was converted into kinetic energy. Um, so that amount of energy is the sum of the kinetic energy of each of the two particles at the in the final picture. Um, So uh, if you had, by the way, if you had a plus and a minus charge, they're going to be, they're going to be attracted to each other and the potential energy, which was negative, is going to get even more negative. And really there's no limit to how negative it can get, right? Because they're going to attract each other and the R is going to get close to zero. So really we don't know how fast they're going to wind up being like actually wind up it's like quantum mechanics takes over or something else happens before they actually crash into each other. Um, so actually quantum mechanics explores what happens when two charges get really, really close to each other. And then all this stuff sort of breaks down at that point. So really interesting topic, but uh, not, not so relevant for, for what we're gonna do here. Here, we're keeping the charges away from each other enough that quantum mechanics won't really apply. Uh, so in principle, they would, go, they would attract each other and get infinitely fast as they approach each other, but, but not practically speaking, because then the stuff doesn't even apply anymore. Um, if you have more than one charge, uh, see here uh escape speed so uh so let's see in an interaction between two elementary particles so if they're plus and minus in order for them to escape each other so that's negative potential energy they would need to have enough kinetic energy so overall you would have to add the two kinetic energies they would have to have enough kinetic energy for the total energy to be zero because as, as you pull these two things apart the potential energy which started off negative is going to become uh, so if, if you have a, a positive and a negative charge and you plotted potential energy versus the distance separating them, it's going to look like this because remember u was k q one q two over r over r, and if if q one times q two is negative, if one of them is positive and one of them is negative, this is a minus one over r. So it looks like this, and as the distance between these two charges is getting bigger, notice how u is going up, right? It's becoming less negative. So U is going up, and that means the kinetic energy must be going down because the kinetic because the total mechanical energy is conserved. So, you know, if you pick a spot where you're looking at, um, you know, they're at this initial distance away from each other. This is some value of the the potential energy, the initial potential energy. You have to have enough kinetic energy for these two things for these two things to get fully far away from each other, which is this amount of energy. So you would calculate the, the absolute value of that number, u naught. And that's how much total kinetic energy they need to have in order for them to be able to get infinitely far apart, you know, as u goes to zero. That, you know, going along this way. So that that's the principle behind behind that one. Uh, both of these actually are kind of kind of similar. Uh, this is a positive charge and a positive charge, and as they get closer together, the potential energy goes up. So you're trading kinetic energy. Kinetic energy goes up, goes down, and the potential energy goes up. So again, you're going to relate the, the energies that way. Multiple point charges. So if you have several charges, and it looks like you have, oh, this is a before and after. So it looks like you have three charges here. For every pair of particles, you add together its contribution. So the total energy is all distinct pairs. So if you have three charges, you have three pairs, right? One, two, two, three, and then one, three. Uh, you would have to, so this is what's meant by you're summing over i and j, where i is not equal to j. And that this is i less than j just so that you don't double count. So like 1, 2, and 2, 1 aren't the same thing. Or they, they should only be counted once. And that, that's why the, the this looks kind of weird. Um, uh, a dipole, so the, the last section we're going to go over right here. Um, so a dipole, remember that this dipole moment in this field will want to rotate initially, you know, in this configuration, it would rotate clockwise. So it does that because it wants to decrease its potential energy. You can define the potential energy of a dipole in an external field, and it's this, minus p dot e. The potential is minimized if p is totally lined up with the electric field. Both of them are pointing in the same direction. If p is opposite the electric field, then negative p dot e 
would be a positive number, right? Because p dot e would be negative, and then with this minus sign, it becomes a positive. So that's the biggest potential energy it could be, which is a positive number, p times e. This would be zero potential energy if they're perpendicular, and then negative potential energy. And the system will naturally want to go towards negative potential energy. So what happens is that, like, if you, this fit picture right here is where the initial angle is maybe 30 degrees. Uh, so even the initial potential energy is negative. So like on this diagram, it would be like starting right here. And what happens is that as this thing rotates through, it's going to surpass equilibrium. So like a marble on a hill, it will roll right past the equilibrium value and go up to the other side. And it'll just keep going back and forth along the hill, you know, with this total amount of energy. Um, so what that means in terms of the dipole is it's initially pointing this way. It's going to start, it's going to just rotate back and forth like this. It's going to rock back and forth. So all potential energy, zero kinetic energy, and then the potential energy gets more negative. So that's converted to kinetic energy. This is the biggest amount of kinetic energy it has, and then it starts to slow down as the potential energy increases again. And it just keeps going back and forth. And it can't go past this turning point because it doesn't have enough energy. Once the kinetic energy goes down to zero, it can't go any, any past that, so it has to go back. All right, and then now this, this new thing, electric potential. So we'll save that for another video. If we turn our attention to this problem, um, what's the total potential energy of this charge distribution? So there's more than two point charges. There's three point charges. And we have to remember that the total potential energy is a sum over all distinct pairs of K, Q, I, Q, J, all pairs I, J. Uh, and then R, I, J is the distance between Q, I, and Q, J. So I've labeled these one, two, and three right here. Uh, so the potential energy will be uh, k q one q two over the distance between one and two uh, plus and then q one q three over r one three and then k q two q three over r two three. Um, at least the, you know these aren't vectors, right? The, uh, potential energy is a scalar as well as potential in the next video. These are scalars. So you, what's nice is that we don't have to worry about any vector signs here, right? Uh, we're attracted, we're, we're repelled, doesn't matter. We do need to keep track of the signs, plus or minus. Uh, but we don't have to keep track of any directions, x and y components. That's what's really nice about dealing with energy, remember, from mechanics. Um, so for example, this if you plug in, so you'll, this would be Q1, would be this value in nanocoulombs. This would be Q2. Uh, R12 is the distance between charges one and two, which is in SI unit 0 0.040 meters. And this is a three, four, five triangle. So R23, uh, different color, just to distinguish it. R23 is going to be the distance between those two things and a three, four, five triangle. So it looks like this is going to be five centimeters away. Um, so what you get by plugging in these numbers uh, is so the first one is 2.7, negative 2.7 microjoules. And then the next one is three point, negative 3.6 microjoules. And the last one, two and three are both positive. That's a positive contribution. This is plus 1.6 microjoules. Or when you add them all together, it looks like you get negative 4.7 microjoules. That will be the total potential energy. Now this is negative. And so what this means is that uh, you would need to, su to supply energy in order to get these things apart. So in other words, the yeah, these two things repel each other, but overall they're attracted enough to the minus charge to not like fly away from each other, right? If you had two plus charges, they would just fly away from each other. That potential energy, positive potential energy would be converted to kinetic energy. Here they're overall attracted to each other. So you would need to put in a, it, the amount of energy it takes to separate these charges fully. You need to get them all infinitely far away from each other. This is the amount of energy it would take. It would take 4.7 microjoules. Because when you add it to this, then you that would be zero total energy. So that's how much energy you would have to supply this. So the negative 4.7 microjoules of potential energy plus some external work from you would give zero total mechanical energy to the system. So they would be able to get infinitely far away from each other and have no energy left over for kinetic energy. Um, so this, the system overall is what's called bound. They, they can't escape each other. And you have to supply energy to get, get them infinitely far away from each other. All right. 